To deepen our understanding of BPMN basics, let's take a look at poles and lanes, messages and information artifacts. Poles are used to represent a participant in the process, so they can be named as a business entity, like a company, a company or a department, or they can receive the name of the business role, like the buyer, the seller, the shipper, the bank, and so on. They can also be used as a container to represent an entire business process, and then you name them with the name of the process, like complaint handling, order process, sales process, payment process, registration process, and so on. They have well-defined semantics in BPMN, in the sense that the pool is a container for the sequence flow between activities, and that sequence flows are not allowed to cross the boundary of a pool. So a pool is a container and the entire process must be within that container. You can divide your pools into lanes, and you can do that to represent, for example, business units, departments within a company, or to identify roles within a particular business unit. So when you look at the example on the left, you see that in the sales department, we recognize two roles, the roles of the manager and the salesperson. Pools and lanes can be further nested, so you can put lanes into lanes and then lanes into lanes into lanes and so on. And in this way, you can represent a hierarchy of a company with its departments and then all the roles within a department. The lanes that you define in, in this way applies to a specific process level, but if you refine your process, for example, you have a complex activity that is expanded, then you can replicate the lane set in the parent and child level diagrams. Messages are used to communicate across pools. And a message is represented as a dashed arrow that goes from one pool to the other one or from an activity in one pool to an activity in the other pool. So looking at the diagram here, you see two pools that represent two participants in a process. The two participants are independent in the sense that each of the participants has its own process, but nevertheless, there is some coordination needed across the two participants. So for example, in pool 2, when a task is finished, then the participant in pool 2 might send a message to the participant in pool 1, like, I'm ready, please do this or that for me. And then a message may come back, message 2 would be a message like, I'm ready, and message 3 could be, and here's the data that you need. So you see how messages are used to coordinate across participants that are belonging to different entities or that are different actors, independent from each other. This means that the global coordination across participants and within participants is a combination of sequences and messages. So sequences are used to coordinate tasks within a single participant. So here you see the example at the top, you have the supplier and then you have organized shipping followed by confirmed shipping to customer followed by sent invoice. So sequences are used to coordinate within the supplier participant. If you add to that the messages, then you coordinate across the different participants, but this, come on top, this comes on top of the coordination within a participant. So you find again the supplier with the three tasks in sequence, and now the shipper has a sequence of two tasks, and the messages will coordinate between all these tasks, resulting in the end in a sequence of five tasks that will be executed. So the process will start with request shipping at the suppliers, and then the supplier would continue with confirm shipping to customer, but has to wait for input data. So it means that the next task that will happen is receive shipping request that receives volume and destination. And this is done by the shipper. Then you go on with planned shipper, plan shipping at the shipper's uh, side. And then when this task is finished, shipping date and price are sent to the supplier. And so then the supplier can confirm the shipping to customer and then send the invoice. So you can see how the combinations of sequences and messages give result in a global process across the different participants. Here you see our order management process supplemented with pools and lanes and messages. So first of all, you see on the supplier side 
that you have the pool that has been divided into three departments, warehouse, finance and sales. And this allows to distribute the tasks across the different departments in the organization of the supplier. So you see that check stock, reject order and accept order are done by sales. Send invoice and handle payment are done by finance and ship goods is done in the warehouse. You also find at the top a pool for the customer, so you can represent the customer as an external participant to the supplier. And the customer is a black box. We don't know what happens inside. We only see the message ex exchanges between the customer and the supplier. So we see that the supplier process will start when it receives a message from the customer with a pur purchase order. And then you see the messages going back to the customer with either the rejection or the confirmation, the invoice, and then a message from the customer to the supplier with the payment. We can further expand our process descriptions by adding information artifacts. These can be data objects and data stores. Data objects are a mechanism to show how data is required as input for a task or is produced by as output uh, of an activity. Data objects are shown as a sheet of paper with a folded corner in the upper right corner. Data stores are containers of data objects that need to be persisted beyond the duration of the process instance. So it means that when a process is over, the data that is stored in the data store still exists. As opposed to the data object, the data object is part of the process. When the process is over, this data object disappears as well. And then you connect those data objects and data stores using associations, which can either be directed or undirected. The directed are typically used to show the input and the output. A data object, because it disappears when the process is finished, is the equivalent of a local variable and the data store, because it persists beyond the process existence, is the equivalent of persistent data. And at the bottom of the slide, you see a little example of how you can represent that in BPMN. So you see the order as a local data object that is the output of check credit and is passed on to process order task. The process order task will update the balance in the persistent store that contains customer account information. And here you see again our order processing model, but this time with supplemented with artifacts. So you see that the check stock task will pass on the purchase order to the accept order task as a local object. And the accept order will write into the purchase orders database. It will store the purchase order there and send invoice and ship goods can then read this purchase orders database to retrieve the information on the order that needs to be invoiced or shipped. If you need more information, you can find more slides and web lectures on this website, which is the companion website of the book on fundamentals of business process management. And on that website, you will also find a self-test where you can test your knowledge of BPMN.